Oh God, if you're listening to my prayers, please, please, I want a car. So I will send a fire on Moab and still devour the strongholds of... That's not right. No! Unfortunately, most Christians have never read the Bible cover to cover, not even once. And dare I say that most of you haven't. This is something that we plan on rectifying over the course of the year in the School of Discipleship where you will be required to read the entire Bible. How do you get started? Well, open your Bible and start reading. But don't open it at randomly, you know, where some people kind of make a prayer to God, give them a message and then open their Bible and point a finger at it. That could backfire so badly. Like, there was this guy who did this. He said, God, really, I really need a message today. Speak to me. He opened his Bible and poked his finger straight at Matthew 27, 5. Judas hanged himself. Oh dear, the man went. Please give me another message. He closed the Bible and opened it to Luke 10, 37. Go and do likewise. You see, there are others who say they don't understand the Bible. That is because they do something similar like this guy. They open it in the middle, read a passage, can't make any sense of it, and then they give up, saying it's too hard to understand. Oh, come on, give me a break. You open any book in the middle and I bet you won't understand anything. There was another guy who used to do exactly the same thing. He'd buy a book and then start reading it in the middle. He'd do this with every book. One day a friend asked him, why do you always read a book from the middle? And the guy said, double suspense. I don't know the ending and I don't know the beginning either. Now, the best place to start reading the Bible would be the New Testament from the Gospel of Matthew. Then you gotta work your way down to Revelation. Ideally, some people say that you have to begin at the beginning, which is the Genesis. But the danger here is if you come to the book of Leviticus, oh, good word, there is a good chance that you'll stop right there and never move ahead. But if you begin with the New Testament, with the new gospel of peace and hope and love, then we will be encouraged to go back and read the Old Testament because we will realize very soon that every single thing in the New Testament is a fulfillment of a promise made in the Old. How do you read the New Testament? I would like to compare reading the Word of God because many times people say they don't understand it to a jigsaw puzzle. I remember when I was young, I used to love solving jigsaw puzzles like this one over here. Now, if I open this box, which is the first thing you need to do, by the way, when you're solving a puzzle, you take out the little packet with the tiny little pieces in them. If you look at some of these pieces, you might be intimidated by just looking at them because you'll have no idea where any of these fit. But like any jigsaw puzzle enthusiast will tell you, you need to start by solving the jigsaw puzzle by going through the pieces, looking at the pieces with the straight edge like this one. Because what these pieces indicate is that a part of the size of the puzzle. So you go through 100 pieces segregating the ones with a straight edge, and then you take the ones with a straight edge and start to put them together to form a frame. Now, what this frame does is two things. One, it gives you a sense of size, perspective, and two, everything else that belongs to the picture fits within the frame. Then you go through the pieces again, this time perhaps looking for some pieces with a certain pattern, maybe with letters or words on it and keeping those aside. And you take these little pieces and you start make little islands on the pictures with them across the puzzle and then you go through the pieces again. This time trying to fit the pieces and connect them to the island until eventually you get an entire picture fully drawn. The Word of God is something like starting to read the Gospel of Matthew. Work your way down to Revelations reading it like a storybook. It doesn't matter at this point if you understand little or absolutely nothing what you're trying to obtain here is the frame a kind of outline for the story 
Then you go through it again, this time though, looking for certain patterns that you might recognize. One, for instance, might be the promise that I'm sure you've heard from, Matthew 7, 7, where Jesus says, ask and you will receive. It's a wonderful promise, a promise that seems to say, ask for whatever you wish and I will give it to you. You read it again and this time you're looking for something that connects the pieces like the puzzle. And you might come across Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, which says, Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and then ask and you will be given. You go further to John chapter 15, verse 7, where Jesus says, If you remain in me and my word remains in you, ask whatever you will and it will be given unto you. And now you realize this promise that seems unconditional has some conditions after all. And the next time you're reading through the Bible, you're looking for answers to these questions. What is God's kingdom? What is his righteousness? How do I seek after them? How do I remain in God? And how do I let his word remain in me? And as you're reading the word of God, these answers start to sprout out. And by this time, I'm telling you, you would be in love with the word of God. And this is when you want to discover every single word that God has said because you just love everything that he has to say, which is when you delve into the Old Testament and you just marvel at God at every word in the Bible. Well, that's all we have for you today at Take 5. Until next week, ciao!